Hi, welcome to this Corporate Maths video on domains and ranges. In this video, we're going to look at what a domain is of a function, what a range is of a function, and how to answer some typical questions based on those. So first of all, let's look at what a domain is of a function. So here we've got a graph, and this is the graph y equals f of x. And so that means that some values of x have been chosen, and as you can see, we've started at negative 5, all the way up to and including 5. A function has been applied to those, and they have generated the y values, the heights. So for instance, whenever we've taken the value of negative 5, when the function has been applied, we've got the value of negative 2. When the value of 1 has been chosen, and the function has been applied, we've got the output of 1. When the input of 5 is chosen, the value of x is 5 is, cho is chosen. When the function is applied, we've got the answer of 3. Now the domain are those inputs, those values of x which have been placed into the function. So if we look at this, we've started at negative 5, and we've got all the way up to and including to 5. So we're going to write that down. The domain of f of x are those inputs of x, those values of x which are put into the function, and they are the values of x that are bigger than or equal to negative 5, but less than or equal to 5. So the domain of a function is just the values that are placed into the function. The range of the function, whether the outputs are okay. So let's have a look at the function. We've applied this function to the values of x. So whenever we put in negative 5, we got the answer negative 2. When we put in the value of 5, we got the answer. The function has given us the answer of 3. So the range of those outputs. So you can see the lowest one is negative 2 and the highest one is 3. And to find the range, you consider the heights of the function. You look at the graph and you see what's the lowest point, what's the highest point, and you write it as an inequality. So f of x is bigger bigger than or equal to negative 2, but less than or equal to 3. And that's it. So the domain is the inputs into the function, so what values of x have been placed into the function. The range of the outputs, so what values of y have been generated once the function has been applied. And that's it. And you often write them as inequalities like this. Okay, let's have a look at our first question now. So our first question says, here we've got a graph and we've been given y equals f of x, a graph of a function. It's a quadratic. We've been asked to find the domain of the function and the range of the function. So looking at this graph, first of all, let's consider the domain, the values of x which have been inputted, where they've started at negative 2 and they've finished at 2. So we're going to write x is bigger than or equal to negative 2 but less than or equal to 2. So all the values from negative 2 to 2 were placed into the function. The range, so what are our heights of the function? So what values have been generated when the function has been applied? Okay, so as you can see from the graph, the highest point of the function is 3, and the lowest point of the function is negative 5. So let's write that as an inequality. The range of the function is bigger than or equal to negative 5, but f of x is less than or equal to 3. Let's have a look at our next question now. So next question, we've got this graph and it's a line that goes from negative 3, 10 down to 7, negative 1. And the question says, what is the domain of f of x? So there are our x values. So as you can see, we've started at negative 3. And we've gone all the way to 7. So our domain is x is bigger than or equal to negative 3, but less than or equal to 7. And the next bit is, what is the range of the function? So the heights. So as you can see, the highest point of the graph is 10, and the lowest point of the graph is negative 1. So our heights, f of x, is going to be bigger than or equal to negative 1, but less than or equal to 10. And that's it. So remember, the domain is the x values that have been placed into the function, and the range is the, x, the y values, the heights that have been generated. Okay, so our next question is a little bit different than the previous ones because we haven't been given a drawn or sketch of the function. So what I'd recommend is that we draw a sketch ourselves. So let's have a read of the question. f of x equals the function is x squared minus 5 for all values of x. So this is our domain here. We've been told that all values of x are going to be inputted into the function. And we've been asked to find the range of the function. So in other words, those values of the outputs. So if we sketch the function, we have, we'll have our x-axis and our y-axis. We've been told that the function is x squared minus 5. So x squared is that u-shaped parabola, and it's been moved down 5 squares. So it will look something like this, where it crosses the y-axis at minus 5 and goes up and goes up. So in terms of this function, the heights are all the heights that are bigger than or equal to negative 5. So f of x, the heights, the range of the function, is bigger than or equal to negative 5. And that's it. All right, so our next question, we've been given the function f of x equals, in brackets, x plus 3, x plus 5 for all values of x. So our domain here is that x can take any value. And the question says, what is the range of f of x? So in other words, if we sketch this graph, what will the heights of the graph look like? So first of all, let's sketch it. So if I was to sketch this graph, the first thing I would do is consider where the graph, if we had y equals x plus 3, 
x plus 5. Where does it cross the x-axis? So it crosses the x-axis whenever y is equal to 0. So that will be whenever x is equal to negative 3, whenever x is equal to negative 5. So it will look something like this. Now, to find the heights of this graph, we can tell that the heights of this graph are all the heights bigger than or equal to the height of the minimum point. So we need to find this minimum point. So there's three common ways we can find this minimum point. The first way is that we're obviously knowing this parabola is symmetrical, that if this crosses the x-axis at minus 5 and minus 3, that this minimum point will be at the point whenever x is equal to negative 4. And we can substitute negative 4 into the function to find what the height of what the output would be, the height. So if we substitute negative 4 into here, we're going to get negative 4 plus 3, that's a negative 1 negative 4 plus 5 that's 1 and when we times them together that will be negative 1 so that's one way we could find that minimum point actually it was quite a nice and simple way to do it to find the height of it alternatively we could have used completing the square so we could have expanded the brackets and got x squared plus 8x plus 15. i uh, used completing the square so bracket x plus and then half of the 8 is 4 close bracket squared take away 4 squared that's going to be minus 16 plus 15 and then whenever we then simplify these simplify these numbers on the end we're going to get x plus 4 squared minus 1 and that means that we had the x squared graph it was moved four squares to the left and one square down so here alternatively we could have used differentiation where we differentiate this knowing obviously at the minimum point that the gradient is equal to zero we could differentiate this get the x value and substitute it in and it would also give you negative one okay so we know that this graph is um, has a minimum point of negative four negative one so we know that the heights of this function are all the heights bigger than or equal to negative one so f of x the range of the function is bigger than or equal to negative one Okay, our next question, we've been given the function f of x equals 3x plus 1, 4. And we've been given a domain this time of x is bigger than or equal to negative 2, but less than or equal to 7. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sketch this graph. So we're going to have our axes. Let's put our values of x in. So whenever x is equal to negative 2, we're going to get 3 times negative 2 plus 1. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, plus 1 is negative 5, so it'll be minus 2, minus 5, so it's going to be here, minus 2, minus 5. And the value of 7, well, it's going to be 3 times 7, plus 1. Well, 3 times 7 is 21, plus 1 is 22. So that will be the coordinate 7, 22. So it'll be somewhere up there, 7, 22. And obviously we're drawing it up with a ruler. And I like something like that. So the question asks us for the range of the function. So the domain is obviously negative 2 to 7. So x is bigger than or equal to negative 2 but less than or equal to 7. The range is the heights. So the lowest height is negative 5 and the greatest height is 22. So f of x is bigger than or equal to negative 5 but less than or equal to 22. Okay, our next question we've been given that f of x equals 5 subtract 4x for a domain of x is bigger than or equal to negative 1 but less than or equal to 3. So again, let's sketch our axes, sketch the graph, sketch the function. We are going to have, let's put in our values. So put, obviously this is a straight line graph, so if we put in our two values, we should get the beginning and the end of the line. So that's how we can find the heights. So, so if we put in the value of negative 1, that's going to give us 5 subtract 4 times negative 1. That's going to be 5 subtract negative 4 and 5 subtract negative 4 is equal to 9 so it's going to be minus 1 9 so up here somewhere minus 1 9 and whenever x is equal to 3 well, that's whenever x is equal to negative 1 whenever x is equal to 3 we're going to get 5 subtract 4 times 3 well that's 5 subtract 12 and 5 subtract 12 is negative 7 so that's the coordinate 3 negative 7 now again, the question is asked us for the range of this function, so that's the heights. So if we consider the heights of this function, the greatest height is 9 and the lowest height is negative 7. So the function is going to be bigger than or equal to the lowest height, that's negative 7, but less than or equal to the greatest height, which is 9. And that's it. So this is our last example. We've been given a function, f of x is equal to 2x subtract 15, and we've been told the domain for this question is that x is bigger than or equal to p, a certain value we're going to find, but less than or equal to 8. So we know the domain is going to go up to 8, but we've got to find the value p of where it starts. And we've been told the range, the heights of this function, whenever it's drawn, is that it's bigger than or equal to negative 20, but less than or equal to 1. Now let's have a look at this function a second. It's a straight line, 
and it's got a gradient of two. So it's gonna be going upwards. So that means that because it's a straight line going upwards and it's got a greatest height of one, it should mean that whenever we substitute an eight into the function, we should get an answer of one. So let's test that. So whenever X is equal to eight, we're gonna get two times eight, take away 15. Two times eight is 16 take away 15 is equal to 1. So that's right, so this point here will be the point 8, 1. Now there's going to be, it's a straight line graph and it's going to go down to a certain point where the height is equal to negative 20. Now I'm not going to draw yet because I don't know whether this is going to be on this side of the y-axis or that side of the y-axis. So what I'm going to do is I want to find the value of x which was substituted into the function to give us the answer of 20. So if we write the function 2x minus 15 equals negative 20, then if we solve that, we should get the x value, that, that value of x which was substituted into the function to get the answer of negative 20. So let's add 15 to both sides. So it's going to be 2x equals negative 5. And if we divide by 2, we're going to get x is equal to negative 2.5. So that means that the point minus 2.5 has a height of negative 20. So the graph will look something like this. Okay, now the question asked us for the value of p. So the value of p was the beginning of the domain. So as you can see, it starts at negative 2.5. So p equals negative 2.5, and that's it.